Today's episode is short and simple with a quick but tasty meal. Welcome back to At The Table, Sydney here, and today we are making one of my favorite recipes. I don't normally like this type of recipe, but this one to me is so, so good. So I'll explain that in just a minute. Um, it is big month, June. There's a lot of uh, things that we recognize nationally. And the, another thing that we recognize nationally is fruits and vegetables. So it is National Fruit and Vegetable Month. And this came out in 1991 as a way to just help promote people to um, use local fruits and vegetables that are being grown. So June is definitely a popular time, especially where we are in North Carolina in the Southeast. We have so many fruits and vegetables uh, available to us. So uh, this came out in 1991. They created National Fruit and Vegetable Month to help people use up all of the produce that these farmers were growing locally in their communities. So that is what we're gonna to make today, or we're gonna to do today is use some fresh fruits and vegetables. We are making a tuna salad. And as I said, I'm not really a tuna salad person. It's just not, I think it's usually the mayonnaise mixed with the tuna that has always just kind of not been something I've enjoyed. Um, but this has a little bit of a spin on it. It is our Med Instead of Meds recipe. Um, and I personally don't like a lot of really fishy flavors, which is why I've never been a big canned tuna person or the tuna pack person. Um, but this recipe, it's so good to me. It's when it's mixed all together with those uh, fresh vegetables and the seasonings that we use, to me, it just tastes so good. It doesn't really remind me of your traditional tuna salad. So what we're gonna start with, it is a good bit of chopping because a lot of what we're using in this recipe is gonna be vegetables. Um, it's vegetables and tuna, and then you've got a little bit of olive oil and seasoning. So it's very simple. A lot of these ingredients you'll likely have available to you in your home already. So if you are um, trying to you know, keep costs down at the grocery store, then you can absolutely make this recipe and save a little, little dough, a little cash. So one thing that we're adding is minced carrots. When we think about carrots have that good beta carotene in it, which is great for our eyesight. And I just love it for the sweetness. It has that good crunch in there. Um, I love to eat carrots by themselves, but they're great cooked as well. So we actually did a program with the kids and I had a bunch of these baby carrots we tasted. Carrots as one of our uh, foods when I was with them. So you can use the regular big carrots if that's what you have. I'm just using what we had here on hand today. We need about half a cup, so keep that in mind. As I mince, I kind of eyeball it. <clears throat> you can actually measure it as well, just to make sure that you have um, enough in there. Remember to watch those fingers as we're chopping. So um, whenever you are choosing fruits and vegetables, definitely keep an eye out for those things that are uh, made here locally and helping to support some of our local farmers. We have I think most of these we can grow locally. We do grow locally um, that are in this recipe. And this is also one that you could kind of interchange. You could substitute stuff or switch things up based on what you like. I think if you don't like carrots, any other like crunchy vegetable would be great. We are adding pep bell pepper to this. That would probably be my first uh, suggestion would to do, to, be, to do something like red bell pepper. But if you, um, since we already have bell pepper in this, 
you could do something else that just gives it that crunch. So that's kind of what we're looking for here in this particular recipe is it to give a little bit of crunch, a little bit of sweetness. So we get that with the, the carrots. And if you had red bell pepper, it would give it that sweetness, the sweet crunchy factor as well. So mostly this recipe is a lot of chopping up, but we don't have to cook anything. So if you don't mind kind of hanging out in the kitchen chopping and maybe it's really hot and you just don't feel like turning on the stove or kind of hanging out over a, um, a hot a hot stove or oven, then this is a really good one to make just because you can avoid all that. So I'm gonna add all that to our pan, or our bowl, sorry. The next thing that we are doing is a little bit of bell pepper. So our recipe called for a um, yellow bell pepper and thinking through the ingredients we have, yellow would definitely give it that extra color. So we love to have different colors, try to kind of choose a variety of colors in our dish. Typically that is what I do when I'm looking at a recipe. If it just says bell pepper, I'll kind of think through what is another color, um, what is a color that I'm missing? And I'll choose a bell pepper that kind of matches that color because those are so versatile. So we have green simply because that's what I had on hand. And same thing there, if you're growing your own fruits and vegetables, you're growing your own um, bell peppers, if you're growing green ones, then you can absolutely use, you know, use the green ones. It doesn't have to be the color that it calls for in the recipe. So when we're chopping, I like to top and tail that bell pepper and then I just kind of cut around and get that center seed out. And then I just chop it each large piece into those, um, those smaller bites. All right, I'm gonna finish doing this. We'll see you guys back in just one second to finish up this tuna salad. Star Communication strives to provide you with the best video services. That's why we invested in cutting-edge video equipment to bring you new features such as Cloud DVR, Restart TV, Local Video On Demand, Advanced Parental Controls, and Higher Quality Reception. Unfortunately, these improvements require some changes and existing DVR customers will lose their current recordings. Changes will start the middle of January, so please view all your recorded content. We hope you will love the new Star TV. Hey guys, welcome back. So we are just finishing up this green bell pepper. We want about half a cup of each of these vegetables. So we're just doing half a cup of carrots, half a cup of green bell pepper, or you could do any color bell pepper that you have on hand. And then we're gonna do half a cup of celery as well. So those different things give it that good crunch because these are all just your raw vegetables. Um, of course, make sure that you are rinsing those vegetables before you're eating them. It's um, just to kind of remove any dirt or anything like that. We don't need to use products on our vegetables to clean them. Rinsing them with water and even just giving a little bit of kind of a rub when, whenever you're rinsing it, do it with your thumb. A little bit of that friction can help to remove any dirt or debris or anything. Uh, so you don't have to be concerned about using vinegar or things like that. There's no evidence to really say that that stuff does clean your vegetables any further than just using plain old water does. So something to keep in mind just whenever we're thinking about summertime and eating more of those fresh fruits and vegetables, they're gonna be a little bit more affordable. So just keep in mind, of course, just rinsing those and you don't need to spend some money on some fancy produce cleaner. So this is a great recipe to do if you need to practice some of your knife skills. We have used this recipe before when we do our workshops here at the Extension Office. A lot of times we'll do a knife skills class or any of our cooking classes. Uh, I will incorporate this recipe simply because it gives people a lot of practice. And we're not really doing a whole lot of vegetables that roll around on you and might be difficult to um, 
contain all together. So these are all really good ones to practice with. So if you have um, even, you know, a young one at home that you are trying to teach a little bit more about how to cook in the kitchen and some of those different skills, celery is a great one. Um, bell pepper is another great one. Carrots, just because they can roll, can be a little tough. But for the most part, um, if, you know, those are some good vegetables for you to try in with your children so that they can practice themselves as well. They also make some really nice little green um, plastic type knives that kids can practice with. And they could do any of your soft fruits or vegetables. So practicing cutting up strawberries or watermelon, um, things like that, that they can just get exposure to cooking in the kitchen. That will help them to also possibly eat some of those fruits and vegetables that sometimes can be tricky with our little ones. And big ones too. But practice and getting them involved in the kitchen is a great start to kind of introduce them to different fruits and vegetables. All right, so we're using half a cup of this. And you want to keep in mind, you know, we're getting tons of fiber in this recipe. Um, it's going to be pretty low calorie and very nutritious. So anytime I talk with the children about what they're getting with fruits and vegetables, I talk about it just being tons of these little bitty vitamins and minerals that they're able to get in their body. So each little bite that they eat of fruits and vegetables, they're getting these nutritious packed little vitamins and minerals throughout their whole entire body that can help their body to function at its best. All right, so that's about half a cup. And then what we have next are just some olives. So we're not gonna use a ton of olives. These are that, the canned black olives. Um, we're gonna use about, let's see, a quarter of a cup. So not a ton, just enough to give it flavor. If you don't like olives, absolutely you can omit this. Um, the recipe also actually calls for onion, and I'm personally not a big raw onion fan. Um, sometimes onions can give people indigestion, and that's just unfortunately what happens to me. So I chose to avoid that today. Uh, if I do have to usually add onions, which you never have to do anything, but if a recipe calls for onions, sometimes I'll substitute green onion in place, but we're just gonna avoid it altogether. You can adjust this to however you like. I have had classes where this, the majority of the class didn't like olives and we have omitted the olives and the recipe was still delicious. So we're just chopping that up nice and minced. You can see how finely minced that is. And we're gonna throw this all into our bowl as well. So that is all of the chopping that we have to do. So what we're gonna do, we'll take a quick break. We'll see you guys back in just a second and we'll actually wrap this up. Just because something may work, doesn't mean it's right for your business. Let Star Communications knowledgeable consultants help you customize a hosted voice system that's right for you. Our dedicated experts work with you to understand your business needs and guide you at every step from choosing and installing services to ongoing maintenance and support. Contact STAR today. All right, guys, welcome back. So we are just gonna mix our veggies together and then we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients and it's done. So nice, quick and easy meal for you, especially when it starts getting warmer, it's really hot. Um, this will help to cool you off. So the next thing that we're adding is our tuna. And this is two cans of tuna, um, like this type of uh, tuna here that I have. This is a good, a good size of what you want. So you want the five ounces of tuna and we're doing two of those. When you're purchasing your tuna, look for the one that says chunk light. 
um, the one that says albacore tuna is gonna be a little bit more of a risk for mercury. So when we think about the way that our fish even contain mercury, uh, when you're looking at your whole food chain, usually the smaller, smallest fish are eaten by a little bit bigger fish that are then eat, being eaten by a little bit bigger fish to the biggest fish. So as all of those, these fish eat the smaller fish and then our big fish eat those, they're gonna contain more of that mercury in them. So the larger the fish, the more likely it is to contain higher levels of mercury. Most people do not really have to be concerned about this because that type of fish is gonna be things that we don't really eat a ton of. However, albacore tuna is one of those that is on the list as a big fish that contains more mercury. So um, your smaller tuna would be okay to consume. Um, still, if you are pregnant, you want to keep that in mind. You wanna kinda not eat too much of that um, as frequently. Also, small children need to be conscious of that as well. But uh, something like the chunk light is gonna be lower in mercury, and that would definitely be okay to consume, you know, a couple times a month um, is really what I would limit it to. I did drain this really, really well. So I like to drain it to the point where there is just no water absolutely in it. I'll put it in a strainer, a smaller um, netted type strainer, and just kind of push all that water out. You can also just take the lid and mash really, really hard to pour the rest of that water out. Um, if you, you know, just want to keep it in the can, just push it all the way down. So got that. The last thing is going to be our seasoning. So I told you we're using olive oil here instead of mayonnaise. I love the, the flavor of olive oil instead of mayonnaise. I've never been a big mayonnaise person. You can ask my family. Um, and to me, it tastes so good, especially if you have a, a decent olive oil that you're using here. So we're only using about a tablespoon of olive oil. You could add extra if you feel it needs more, but we're not doing a whole lot. And then we're gonna add a little bit of cayenne pepper, just calls for an eighth of a teaspoon. So a light sprinkle, you can adjust this to taste. You could leave it out if you don't like any spice at all. Um, I feel like it doesn't give it too much of a kick if I just leave it on the, the lighter side. But if you love hot stuff, go ahead. You could pump it up if you want to because cayenne can get pretty, pretty hot. So mix that. And then our last seasonings are just salt and pepper. So very simple, not a whole lot that goes into this. Um, and it's definitely something that is a nice light meal whenever it's really hot outside during the summertime. So that is why I wanted to make this one today. We're utilizing those fresh fruits and vegetables, mainly the vegetables here. And it's an, a super affordable dish. This is a recipe from our Med Instead of Meds website. Um, and all the ingredients are very, very affordable, easy to find, and hopefully something that you might even have in your pantry. So that's all that we actually have today. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this quick meal. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys back next time on At The Table.